Hey successful dropouts, this is your new co-host Sam Watt. I'm really excited to be introducing Stephen Morley on today's show and if you've been around the forum or the Facebook group you will have seen him around. If you have not been around the forum or the Facebook community I thoroughly recommend getting in there because we have a ton of people in there sharing an incredible amount of value. But without further ado, let's get on with the show. What is up, successful dropouts? Get stoked because today on the show we have Stephen Morley on for the third time. Stephen, I'm so happy to have you on here. For those people that are out there that haven't heard any of the previous episodes, haven't seen you around the successful dropout community on Facebook, do you want to give us just a quick introduction, quick reminder of what you do and what you're passionate about, what you'd really like to teach us today as well? Well, I am so excited and honored. I mean, three times? What have I done to ingratiate myself into this awesome podcast? I don't know, but I'm super excited. And before I even get into me, because congratulations, you're at the helm now of Successful Dropout. Oh, I am super, super excited about this. I have many plans for 2019. I think things are going to be looking a little bit different, but I think novelty is a very, very important thing and also not only is my third time but this is special because i know you and you know what's so cool everybody because we're going to talk about an accelerator program that i do but i actually met sam watt because of the successful dropout i was on uh you know kylan interviewed me and sam heard my interview and reached out to me he's like i just like the way you talk about stuff and we had a great conversation And he ended up enrolling in our spring accelerator. We've become really great friends. And then he was really into the successful dropout community. Now, you know, helping Kyle and run that whole thing. It's just, it's so awesome. It's, I just love how the world works sometimes. Yes. It's an absolutely beautiful place. One of the things that I've really been just amazed at in the last year is just how interconnected everything is. The coincidences that lead to things. But it's, you know what it is? It's, it's, don't you think it's also, it's because something one of these, you know, today, you know, the one of the things I want to share with everybody today is, you know, five things to grow your business mm-hmm. that are not hacks. <laughs> you know, we just might have lost some people, Sam, because everybody, I know you love your hacks, but that is just not going to get you to success. Seriously. I've been working for myself for 18 years. Doing hard work is the thing that really gets you there. And, and we'll talk a little bit about those five areas. But I, and I think what you've, you know, we talk a lot about the accelerator. You've learned to, to me, it's not like a coincidence. Like you, you and I just have very aligned values, very aligned work ethics and worldviews. Uh, um, and especially when it comes to the future of work. So we had that immediate connection. And then mm-hmm. I think we mm-hmm. meet people that you're energized by and you give them energy. Like you want to keep hanging around with those people. You want to build that relationship and then you find another one, another one. And that's how you kind of build out your community. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something like, that's never really taught to us and it's kind of an epiphany once you learn it. (laughs) Yeah. Like, like attracts like, and I think it would be much much more difficult if we didn't have the internet because just a little bit, just a little bit. (laughs) I I think, I think before the internet, there was a lot more isolation. I think it was much more difficult to build up your tribe. It's much more difficult to find those people who really aligned with you. So it's definitely something to be massively grateful for. But I just like that you said that because that's the huge opportunity of the internet. But on the flip side, People who say that they're lonely or depressed is at record levels, at least in the United States. And a lot of times people attribute that because of the internet. And I think we, you know, I think people are kind of getting confused to me. Sometimes the internet is, it has this huge opportunity to bring like-minded people closer together to do great things like it is for you and I. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, a lot of times people spend so much time with the internet that they're constantly connecting with people, but never really getting to know anybody, mm-hmm. right? They're really focused on, like I, I, kind of another thing that's popped into my head recently is we need to seek alignment, not attention. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter how many people are freaking following you on social media and all that jazz. It just matters. It's like, who are the people that you're lighting up and they're lighting you up? And let me tell you, as you know, Sam, it doesn't take that many. It doesn't. It doesn't. You know, quality over quantity. That's true. I think that where there's the real disconnect is 
when you connect with people online, it's almost like a completely different social skill. I mean, you, you don't have many factors such as body language. You don't have even like the physical presence of the person. It makes such a big difference and I think until some people learn that skill of connecting without all the normal factors that we usually have in communication I think it can be very difficult to actually get to that real deep place of connection and start finding those like-minded people and connecting to the deep level that you would really want to be connecting at. Yeah I, I agree with that I think I would say in the last five years um, video chat has gotten just obviously everybody's doing now it just got so so much better it's actually how i communicate with everybody in my business now pretty much i don't do phone calls anymore to, for the reasons that you just stated if i can't be with somebody in person the next best thing is talking to them over video and i think that really accelerates my connection with them a lot of times if i find somebody that i think is interesting a, a blog post that they they've written or i've heard them on a podcast or something they said on social media i reach out to them i'm like hey i really like what you said would you like to jump on like a quick video chat and that really either either they're into it or they're not and if I, we do have that connection it really accelerates the relationship for sure for so sure just go for our people don't go with a back and forth you know even when i used to do online dating i'd be like second email i'm like let's meet <laughs> <laughs> Straight I'm not going back and forth here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of it is has to be based around intentionality. And I think that's a real common thread. You need intentionality, whether it is, you know, an in-person connection or, you know, one, a connection that's thousands and thousands of miles away most of the time. So I think that the way that you approach everything is fundamental as well. I think that's a big piece of the puzzle. Yeah, it's this idea of just being intentional. And as you know, that I'm a big believer in that kind of slowing things down, doing a lot of reflection to understand what it is that you want, instead of constantly responding to all these external stimuli, but and, and assuming that you think that this is what everybody else wants. And that's how you're going to be able to connect with them. And having the guts to say, No, this is who I am. These are my values. And I'm going to have faith that the people who are into me are going to come to me and I'm going to come to them. Definitely, definitely. So I didn't get to give my little brief bio, but uh, you know, or if anybody has listened to me before on the Successful Dropout Podcast, I am trying to prepare people for the future of work by getting them to realize that they can work for themselves. I truly believe working for yourself is the best way to prepare for the future of work. It also happens to be the best way, one of the fastest ways to really learn about yourself. And that's so important, the way that the world is changing so fast now. And... I do that by um, running a 30-day accelerator three times a year. I know a lot of times uh, the people that I work with have never worked for themselves before or they have a lot of concerns about it or they have a lot of obstacles, a lot of fears. And we spend a big part of the accelerator really assessing yourself. I always tell people, you're the first resource of your business and its biggest obstacle. Like mm -hmm. You better dig into that resource like way further than anything else that you're going to do in your business. And... And as you know, Sam, we spend like a lot of time on that. And it's, I have to say, it was even kind of a risk when I started this business to think like, I'm going to teach people about business through life skills. That even sounds a little kooky to me. But I think that now that we've done a second accelerator and uh, that we've had a really great response with this, uh, I think what I'm always trying to do is like, there's those people who are just really excited about working for themselves. I'm trying to reach that next level of people who I believe have the capability of working for themselves, but they've been taught to be afraid of working for themselves. And I think the more that you can learn about who you are, your potential, your possibilities, you gain clarity, you get more confident and you're like, huh, you know what? I can do this because I was once that person. I always call myself a re-election entrepreneur. I got laid off 18 years ago, election day 2000 in the U.S., and um, I never thought I'd work for myself. And then five years in, after not getting the job that I wanted, I, I survived and I was doing pretty well. And I was like, oh, look at this. I'm working for myself and I have so much control over my time. Why would I ever want to go back? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I haven't. I'm truly unemployable. I, I, I know about you, Sam. Like, I, I cannot imagine a scenario that mm -hmm. I would have to get a job. I just, yes. I, that's what motivates me to like 
run my businesses and keep growing because I never want to go back. It's good motivation. It's good motivation. The good things that are available at the end of it, the flexibility, you know, the independence and in income, the diversification that you can obtain an in income from being in business. But, and also always working with awesome people, you know, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I remember like there's people listening to us or, or, or even if you're in school right now, you know that there's always people that are kind of dead weight or you're like, oh my God. And you're gonna have to deal with all different types of people in life. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But now when, you, when I work for myself and like there's somebody who like I talk to about the accelerator and if I don't feel like it's the right fit, I let them know. And I think there's gonna be somebody else out there I think is gonna be a better fit for, for you than I am. Um, or the people that work with me directly on the business. We know we do a lot of kind of like work dating to see if we're the right fit for each other because life is too short to be like having to tolerate people that you're just not in alignment with. Yeah, that's really important for just your personal life journey, even out with work and business. Because if you think about it, if you're inserting yourself into a business as an employee and you are surrounding yourself with a variety of people who probably don't have the most incredible mindsets. There are some awesome businesses out there. Uh, generally speaking, a lot of the work that I've done before I started in business, I was surrounded by people who uh, were mostly negative. The more time you spend around those types of people, uh, the more toxic that becomes for you, uh, the more that kind of goes into your character. So, I mean, of course, on Successful Dropout, you know, our favorite phrase is you're the average of the five people you hang around with. Now, as an employee, you don't have much control over that. And so you literally don't have control over your own life and your own personality. So business not only empowers you financially and through flexibility of time it also empowers you in your character and i believe makes you your most true and authentic self 100 percent. i always remind people human beings we evolve to work together not alone mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and uh we have you and i have been unknowingly uh, referring uh, many different examples to one of the key accelerators to your growth and it's hanging out with like-minded people. Like that's step number one. Like if you want to work for yourself, you want to start a business, you got to look around and say, whoa, I'm hanging out with a lot of people who don't want to work for themselves or aren't working for themselves. You are going to put yourself at a disadvantage. I'm not saying it's not impossible, but it's going to, in the way that Sam was describing, it's going to slow your roll. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're just going to grow faster if you can start finding people who are doing what you want to do. Like if you want to get in shape, you got to hang out with people who are in shape. If you want to like drink less, you got to hang around with people who are drinking less. Whatever change you want to make in your life, you got to go hang out with people who are already doing it or are aspiring to do it. Mm -hmm. You're a product of your environment and people make up the majority of your environment a lot of the time. Yeah, they even say, I feel like they've, I've seen studies like parents kind of start losing influence over their kids um, as early as the age of 10. And after that, it's really their friends that are going to become the bigger influence. Mm, that doesn't surprise me at all. It really, really doesn't. You know, one of the things I want to talk about on the show is say, are these accelerators? Um, because I think a lot of times, you know, especially a lot of the folks probably listening to us, myself included at, at many different times. It's really attractive when you're listening to podcasts and you're looking at all these blog posts, you're collecting all this information, you're getting so overwhelmed and you hear people writing about like this, this hack and that hack and this get rich cook scheme and this super, super easy way to do it. Uh, you know, run your business. And there's all these, you know, silver bullets, magical unicorns and, and, and magic pills. And we're looking for the easy way out. And if you've, if you've been at this long enough, you will eventually come to realize that the easy way eventually becomes the harder way. And that's what I really, you know, I, I, want, I, I said to Sam, I said, I would really love to talk to people today about habits, you know, the, the work of how you need to shift your life. So mm -hmm. you're just kind of doing it all second nature all the time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when you're starting out and you're learning these new things, yeah, it's hard. It is. I'm not going to lie. But once you kind of get through that learning curve and get over the hump, 
we start to kind of get them into a groove and that's going to set you up for longer term success. Right. And then, and then all these little hacks and everything that we were talking about, you can start evaluating them to see which ones are right for you and they can amplify your habits, but you're, you have to, in order for any of those hacks to ever work, you have to have a foundation of habits. And I think too many times people are just looking for that quick rush of money or success, that, that super easy way. And every article you've ever written about how somebody became an overnight success or earned $100,000 in less than a month, mm-hmm. there is an entire story behind those. Let me tell you, I've interviewed over 500 entrepreneurs and all the people that come mm-hmm. to the show that tell me how much money they made so quickly. When I start peeling away the layers of the onion, it turns out they've been working at their craft in, in various capacities for a long time in order to hit that level of success. Even when you see like a 20 year old YouTube sensation, turns out they've been using video since the time that they were like 12 or 13 years old. So that means they've been practicing for like yep. seven years before they hit it at 20 on YouTube. Yep. There's no real route around beating on your craft. It's creating the, the path over and over again, returning to the work and actually putting it in. There's a real disconnect between, you know, those success stories and uh, how easy it seems. And, and I think a big part of it is due to how much entrepreneurship is marketed at the moment. It's seen to be very glamorous and you have uh, a whole lot of unhelpful people who have various uh, videos and, and pieces of content which show off like a lot of the, the product, the end product of what people find visually attractive, you know, the nice. Should I share my a photo of myself with my Ferrari for the show notes? Oh, that would be beautiful, Stephen. <laughs> just like, just, just bring, just bring in all those people. And, um, and, and we're just going to show you guys that uh, that's not what it's all about. Sure, it can be a good byproduct, but tell you what, it's going to be a really long, hardworking path for you to get there to your Ferrari, if that's what you even want. Yeah, and that's cool too. It doesn't matter. I don't want like, no judgment there. Like, I, I believe in prioritizing your spending, like not having it all, but have what you really want and focus your, your resources, your money, your time, your energy toward what you want. Um, but it, just a couple of other things. I just think uh, when we're thinking about, you know, these habits versus the hacks, in terms of what we're seeing on the internet, you have to ask yourself, like, why do I see it everywhere then, Sam and Steven? Like, why is everybody writing about it? You know why? Because it's great clickbait. You're scrolling through your social media Mm -hmm. feeds. Of course, it's super sexy to see, like, somebody made $100,000 in less than a month. I want to read that. And that's that's what it is. You know what I mean? That's all they're doing. And then uh, all these people that are selling programs that tell you how to make so much money and how to find success super fast. Let me tell you, the only person getting rich is the person selling you that snake oil. (laughs) It's not you. Yeah. And it goes back to if it's too good to be true, it usually is. I think that's universally true. So uh, let me just give some context for all the people that I've interviewed. Um, it takes about two to three years to get to a sustainable level of financial income where you're, you have your system, you're living, you're starting to like live the lifestyle that you want. Or if you've been in a pivot mode for anybody who's been in, you know, had a career for a while, you're making about the same amount of money as your last job. It's because there's this transition because we have to not, you're not just learning how to set up a business and start a business, but you're deprogramming yourself from that employee mindset. We were all taught to follow the, follow the rules, you know, um, here's the directions, you know, defer to authority. And now we're moving into this economy where you really have to think for yourself. You have to question things. You have to create, you have to make mistakes. That's how you're going to learn the best and most effective way of learning is to do on your own. And that's another one of the accelerators that I have learned through the years that you got to experiment. You got to um, take imperfect action constantly every single day and yeah. share it along the way. I mean, you do a lot of that too, Sam. Yeah. Uh, well, what I found personally is that um, it comes with a lot more responsibility than you would actually expect. So you might think, right, I've got all this flexibility. I've got all this control over the way that I do things. And then you realize the second something uh, isn't happening, it's because of your inaction. It, the buck stops at you when you go into business. You don't have that boss who'll pick up the slack if you make an error or who 
or who is prepared to you know give you a bit of an easier time if you don't manage to make things happen everything comes back to what you do or don't do everything is an exact result of that at the end of the day so that was a big mindset shift for me because my whole life i'd been following everything that other people were telling me so you know all the way through school even through university um and then as i got to the end of university and realized hey hang on a minute i'm not sure i want to keep doing all these things that people are telling me to do and i'd had an i'd had a lot of experience in various different jobs i'd done restaurant work i'd done a lot of uh phone call work i'd done it support i'd done software development and in each of them i was really unhappy i was always deeply discontent at how i felt at the end of a working day it was never fully satisfying work and i realized that you know there was something in me that just really didn't enjoy having the value that i was providing to other people dictated by people above me so i realized that i actually wanted to provide value to other people on my own terms so i thought that's great that's got so much freedom you know i can execute these incredible visions but it was only a few months in that i started to understand just how much extra responsibility that came with um and that that was a big eye opener for me that was a big big eye opener so it's more difficult definitely it's definitely the tougher route and you're finding you're more but you're going to learn right mm -hmm. like when you have that resistance that friction you're going to learn where you're going to know for yourself when you question things and you can find out what really works for you that's all that ever matters at the end of life and i think we are constantly looking for answers from other people you're looking for permission from others for how to live mm -hmm. your life right and i think a lot of us are caught in that dynamic and i think what you and i are trying to inspire people to do is to know for yourself like test it out like don't just take somebody else's yeah. word for it set up a little experiment see how you do it for yourself and, and just don't underestimate your own natural curiosity we're all curious it's just part of being human and every time you ever question your head like kind of let it go and see where it takes you and i think that so that's one of those important especially in your business you want to constantly be setting up these little experiments to know for yourself uh, see, and then don't worry about messing things up or making mm -hmm. a mistake. Every time that happens, I'm kind of like, huh, that's interesting. Um, wonder why that happened or what could I do to prevent this in the future? Uh, you're constantly improving yourself. Yeah. Uh, you know, even at this stage of my career, I'm just constantly making myself learn so many new things because I want to keep my edge sharp. Well, you wake up from autopilot to a certain extent uh, when, when you stop kind of being directed by others and you start, you know, paving your own direction. Ooh, you're a work zombie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I didn't realize it at all. Uh, I, you know, you, you lose your autonomy when you're really ingrained in it. And I, I think it's because of how repetitive it is and, and how instilled it can become in you through every single job. You've got all these expectations through every single moment you're spending in education uh, things are very very structured i i remember but just but just to quickly add to that you're some of the words that you're using are really resounding with me right now because you know this repetitive that things are rigid and structured and you're saying everything's so repetitive i just want to let everybody know that i see work changing in such a way because change, things are changing so oh, fast yeah. and the piece of is accelerating that they're that's why we're having all these stresses in all of our different societies. Structures are being questioned yeah. because they're too rigid. They're not flexible enough to deal with this change. And also we're entering an environment where there's not going to be a lot of repetitive work. That's just going to get automated. Yeah. And that means you're going to have to experiment. You're going to have to be creative. You're going to have to think for yourself, you know, because you might get hired for a job that they don't even know how to tell you how to do it. You know, they're expecting you to. Oh yeah, it. absolutely. And the number one thing we learned with computers is that, Hey, hang on. Why are we doing things more than once? Like if we can do right. if, we, if we can do a calculation one time on this computer, it can run it, you know, a thousand times, a million times. And we've managed to build out computational power to the extent that it can manage more and more and more problems to 
And if you run that in the long term, you know, the natural progression to that is most repetitive functions in human society are going to be automated. It's a certain Which is not a bad it's, thing. It's a I mean, I want to be out to It's a wonderful thing. Well, we're all, because there's so many people I know, you know, that's usually the work that we complain about, that we find oh, yeah. it's miserable. So, so why do we, none of us want to really do it anyway. So yeah, <laughs> let's automate it. That way it frees up our brains yeah. to like go get curious and think of new things. And there's, and that's the thing, there might be a scarcity of jobs in the world, but there are infinite problems to still be solved. I mean, that's the optimism to me where I see like there's so much work opportunity out there. If you could only look at it from that perspective. It's unlimited. Really is. Hey, one of one of the other accelerators I've identified that's kind of related to hanging out with like a minded mm-hmm. people. It's outreach because before you're kind of saying how it's really on you, this resp- responsibility. If nothing happens, well, you were kind of that spark, you know. Yeah. And, and I always tell people like if you look at a sales pipeline, everybody wants to see money come out one end, and they focus on that. But really what you need to focus on is the other end of the pipeline and that's your outreach. Like how are you meeting people? How frequently are you following up with them? Are you building relationships with them? Because no matter what business that you're in, even online digital businesses, if you're not doing that on a regular consistent basis, guess what? You're not going to have any money come out the other end. So outreach, as you know, Sam, I mean, how many times do you think I said the word outreach in the accelerator? Uh, I mean, how many times a day? How many (laughs) times a (laughs) <laughs> it was a lot. I not because it's hard, even when you're an extroverted person, it's it's hard to like, whoa, I gotta do this every day. And and you know, like I'm not telling anybody that there's a certain way that you have to do your outreach. You, you know, you have to you, everybody likes to interact with people in their own way, but you have to like be aware of it, be more consistent about it, turn it into habits, turn it into processes, because that is how you're gonna build your business. Definitely. The expansion of networks generally is probably one of the things that have made me grow the fastest and that's something you taught me Stephen you know I thought I was quite extroverted as a person and uh, I remember this very fondly actually I remember we we, ha- we were having a one-on-one at at a certain point when I was going through your accelerator last year and you said to me Sam so you think you're an extrovert right I was like well well I am he said well we're about to 10x that here we go <laughs> and, and over the course of the next month I met over a hundred new people and established incredible relationships most of them I'm still talking with to this day it led to so many new opportunities it learned it led to incredible learning opportunities I I really couldn't believe the power of it and yeah that's me I'm quite extroverted I'd love to be Wait, don't you think of even when you're extroverted, it's like so often we all have this, whether we realize it or not, this mindset that if we go up to talk to anybody, we immediately think that they're going to reject us because that's another human need mm-hmm. back to like, it's funny, like as much as humans evolve to work together, um, we really don't want to uh, get rejected because we want to be part of the tribe. So we don't want to mm-hmm. get kicked out, mm-hmm. right? And then there's this whole outreach thing that just constantly setting us up for that to have to address this feeling. Yep. But then- when you start really getting in tune with your values and you start understanding who you are and the people that you want to hang out with and the kind of work you want to do and the way that you want to do it. And then you start going up to those people. All of a sudden there's this new shift and maybe you've experienced this, Sam, where you're like, wow, people aren't rejecting me that much. They're embracing mm-hmm. me. This is mm-hmm. new. This is different because it's back to that attraction, that law of attraction again. Yeah. I think that the more uh, time and attention you spend on self-development as well it really grows your security and confidence and so mm-hmm. that brings down your fear of rejection quite a lot so that's another thing you know the more that i focus on that self-development the less the fear of rejection actually had an impact on my decisions and actually freed me up to go and do the things that i wanted to do with without that thing in your mind where you're like oh everyone's thinking these things about me, you, you get all these things in your head and, and they're actually just thoughts. Like that's all they are. It's just thoughts and they're not actually real. And you go up and, and it's your, I always call it your brain is as being an overprotective parent. Yeah. Your brain just wants to make sure that you're making the best use of your limited energy and attention, which was very useful 10,000 years ago, but in modern society for most of us, not really. Um, your brain just doesn't, is not really into any things that 
um, it doesn't have a lot of information about, or if there's uncertainty, or if it's unfamiliar. And to what Sam has been describing, the more you can inform yourself about new opportunities, about people, about yourself, mm -hmm. that is the key way to absolutely weaken any fear information. Absolutely. Moving on, we have two more. I know I'm trying to buzz through these. I don't want to. I know people like have to get on with their days. Oh yeah, these, but these are one all that we've awesome. kind of covered a little a bit about is. Um, habits is another one of those accelerators. If you're kind of constantly looking for shortcuts, you're never going to build a strong foundation. So really when you think I was, and I said this in the accelerator too, you know, your life is some of your habits. You know, I don't care what you're thinking. I don't care what you're doing. What, I mean, what you're talking about. I want to see like, how have you used your time? How are you spending your money? Because that's going to tell me what you're doing in life and where you're going to go. And you know that we spend a lot of time of like really tracking ourselves and really understanding how am I using my time? Where is it going? How am I using my money? Where the heck is that going? And then you can start making adjustments when you say, I have this big goal. And as you know, for a lot of people that go through the accelerator, they think this idea of working with themselves it seems so untenable, so unreachable. But then when we kind of really just start focusing on their habits of where they are right now, here's their goal and how we can start making adjustments to those, to those habits, then they start seeing like, mm -hmm. whoa, I am shifting here a lot faster than I could ever imagine because we're kind of just kind of giving them the code, the secret code, and it's to themselves. Look at your habits. That's, that's where you need to, that's, that's where the change, those are the, the building blocks of change in your life, your habits. You can unlock so much through changing your habits. And it seems really difficult. And actually, it can be challenging, especially when you start out. I found that. And just do like one at a time. Like, don't try to change all your habits oh, at the same time. Oh, yeah. Just like oh, pick yeah. one. Absolutely. And the cool thing when you do that too is when you just focus on one habit, actually start bringing awareness to how much it changes the rest of your life. Just doing something simple like maybe you want to go to bed an hour earlier every day and how that's going to affect the rest of your life. A lot of times that's going to be even more motivating to want to change other habits. You're like, ooh, if I change this other habit, what else is going to happen? Yeah, and it's empowering too, because as soon as you change even one small thing, you realize that you're more powerful than you thought you were. And it's drawing the comparison in the correct place as well. So you don't want to be thinking, wow, there's this person who is just ultra successful and they've got all these incredible systems and habits there's no way i can be like that person no way at all but of course you know it would take a long time i mean think about how long it would have taken that successful person to get to where they are and how they would have probably had to build things up little by little by little you're the exact same you just need to make sure that you're focusing on your own progression and not where everyone else is. It's like, that's where you need to really put your attention in. And, and that mindfulness really brings you back as well to, right, it's self-development. It's not comparison development. It's development of myself. And that's very empowering too. That's something that I found very helpful. The second I realized that all I need to do is be, you know, better than the person that I was yesterday, it's like, huh, that's not actually too difficult. And as soon as you start to do that with one small thing, and then you can build out more things, habit at a time. And there's so many tools as well, so many tools that help you. I use this incredible uh, habit tracker called Habit Bull. You can get it on Android and iOS. And it's got all these different habits that you can enter in. And um, I remember when I first installed it, I was like, oh, yes, I'm just going to go and change all my habits. And I had about 10 different things I wanted to change about <laughs> myself. And it was just a disaster. And, and I was looking at it as I was keeping track. And it was just like all these failures, all these like streaks of habits that I hadn't managed to maintain. Like it didn't feel good. But as soon as I realized it was just way too much and I was like, right, I'm just going to try one. I'm just going to try one thing. I just want to like have my morning routine down like within an hour and get that really streamlined. And as soon as I did that and I managed to do that for like a few days, I was like, huh, there we go. And I've not put too much attention on like I've not split my focus, I've not split my willpower across multiple things, which is very stressful. But it then led me to be able to build out lots of other habits. Once I got one under my belt, I was able to move on to the next. And that's why we're obsessed with habits, because everything I've come to realize, especially I get 
older and older, get more and more into all this. It's really about managing your energy because everybody thinks that they have all this time. You know, you're awake for around 16 hours a day, but Mm -hmm. every one of those hours that you're awake is not equal in terms of your available energy and habits. The cool thing about habits, they energize you as you really start adopting them and getting into them. And they also save you a lot of energy at the same time, right? It's not, you don't have to rely on brute force to do oh, work, yeah. to build your business. You can get into that flow, into that groove. I'm not going to say that it's not going to be tough, you know, tough times or challenging times or times where you really have to hustle, but not, it should not be your default mode of always having to work. And I think that's another thing that kind of ticks me off or uh, that we always see all over the web too, that everybody's like, got to hustle, hustle, hustle. You got to work, 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 work. You got to work, you know, 10 hour days, hundred hour weeks. And I will tell you one mm-hmm. thing, like I've never worked a hundred hour week in my life. And I've been working for myself for 18 years and I've made some good money in my time. And that's awesome. You just don't have to do it. I, I actually, when I hear people talking like that, it just sounds like they don't understand their priorities. Right. And which if I can, <laughs> this is a good segue for our, our last accelerator. Um, idea is um, you have to have a plan, right? It's mm-hmm. really taking time every year, once a quarter, once a month, once a week to reflect on like, how are things going? Am I going toward my goals? What is the next most impactful thing that I can be doing? What is my biggest obstacle? What's the biggest, biggest burning question in my mind I can get off my mind to like keep moving forward? And we just, you know, again, as things keep changing faster and faster, I know it sounds very counterintuitive, but as the pace of change accelerates, we're going to have to start stopping more and reflecting more to make mm-hmm. sure that we're running like a madman or woman in the right direction still. Right? <laughs> because so many people just have no idea. They're like running like crazy, but they like might be just running into failure faster and faster, just going deep oh, yeah. in the hole. Yeah. It, it's when you start out, I, I think it's important. I think that's why self-development and like starting with the self and realizing what your habits are and where you want to go is, super important because that is where you aligned you're like all right what do i actually want that's how you know what you want to do this is the crazy yeah. thing sam i mean i went to, i got an mba which i would never recommend getting because it costs too much mm-hmm. money takes too much time especially if you want to work for yourself but business does start with it's you and you have to identify what energizes you what your values are so that way you can then tap into your curiosity to look out into the world to say hey, here's some challenges that I would like to be involved with or a problem I want to solve. And then who has these problems? Well, let me go meet them. And I like them because they, they're aligned with my values. And that's how a business begins, right? I always remind mm-hmm. people, businesses are about serving other people to help them solve their problems so then they will pay you a fair price for it. That mm-hmm. is all it is. If you look at your business purely only in metrics, you know, you're, you're dehumanizing everything. You're not looking at, you're forgetting about why you're doing this for and who you're doing it for. And it's just all about you then. It's just about you making money. You really don't give a crap mm-hmm. about people. And I'm sorry, Sam, I am not interested in hanging out with those kind of people. I'm just not. Definitely. It's, I, I, th- I think that's really important. So if you don't have those original values, I mean, as you said, you could just be running in a direction that, that you might not even want to. I mean, yeah. I've seen I've seen people. I've been there. <sighs> yeah, I mean, you see a lot. It happens to so many people. Actually, a lot of successful people are what you know we might call successful people. You know, they they've got everything that that they want. They've got the money. They've got the cars. They've got you know even the lovely like beach house, all of that. But you know, at the end of the day, if they don't have their values aligned right they might wake up in the morning and be like hang on like why did i do all this am i still doing what i want like i think i think something that's important to really keep in mind is like how you make your money is just as important as like how much money you end up making that is tweetable right there i want you to remember that okay i want you to tweet that. okay <laughs> um, and and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's also you have to remind yourself who and why are you doing this? And a lot of times mm-hmm. when you're starting out in life or you've gotten, you know, 10 years into your career, a lot of times you're, you've discovered or you realize, or maybe you haven't yet, you're really doing this to please other people. You're doing it to get attention because you think that's what you're supposed to do in order to get attention, to get wealth. But it turns out the answer really does lie within yourself. You have to do this to be in alignment with your values. And you have to do this to be a 
decent human being that you're serving other people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The human aspect is probably the most important. It's something you don't realize about business. When I first was jumping in, I didn't realize how much of a, an interpersonal connection and and the and the relationships with you know everyone in business, your clients, your uh, your business partners, your colleagues, everyone involved. Everything is like an interpersonal relationship that you have to deal with. And as soon as you start losing focus of that, things start to get a bit sketchy when it comes to your values. And you might find yourself straying from those original values. And, you know, it's not healthy for for your business to forget that. Absolutely. I could, I could not agree more. I think a lot of times uh, I always laugh when people say, I'm going to test this idea. I'm going to throw up some landing pages and buy some Facebook ads. And I just laugh. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Somebody clicking on a Facebook ad is not the same thing as talking to them in person or through a video chat. Mm. It's not. You're not going to get the same quality information. And when you're starting a business, you got to talk to real actual people because you have to like, mm see how they feel about what it is that you're doing. How do they talk about it? Maybe they have a different way of having, how they want the problem that you're, you're trying to solve solved in a different way. And that might give you a better idea. And you have to open yourself up to that. And people always wonder like, how do I become a brilliant copywriter and write great, write, uh, and write great marketing copy? And it all starts with people who actually gave a crap about the people mm-hmm. that they're trying to help. And they understand their language and then they use it. It's, that's it. That's exactly it. It's a value exchange. Absolutely. So um, should we wind up things? We, can I share what we're offering here for all your offers? Absolutely. Posts? Absolutely. So I think this has been an incredible, um, incredible conversation. Just five really awesome things that do accelerate your business. Oh, yeah. Let's like repeat those. Yeah. So we're yeah, gonna, go for it. We run we through about- everything. Like-minded people, power. You've got to, if you didn't, mm-hmm. just that's just do that first. It'll solve the rest of them. Oh yeah. <laughs> Go hang oh. with like-minded people. Okay, <laughs> just do that for yourself. Um, and you will have to have that outreach habit. You know, you got to like really start mixing it up and hanging out with the people that you want to help. You know, to be in that outreach habit. And that never ends as you build your business. Got to experiment, try stuff. Don't be afraid. Break things. Make a few mistakes, but learn from it. Don't keep making those mistakes. Habits, that is you're the sum of your habits, your business is the sum of all of your habits, the people that you're going to work with. Start identifying your most productive habits in terms of the goal that you want to achieve and which ones aren't so productive and they're going to take you away from that goal. Uh, and have a plan. Maybe we can link to this in the show notes, Sam. We can uh, happy to share a free copy of our, our strategic plan for the next year for your business to really assess yourself and know where you're going, the things that you need to be working on to grow. So like-minded people, experiment, outreach habits, and have a plan. Those are the accelerators. That is the stuff you need to focus on. Stop trying to find the latest hack to save yourself. Yeah. Hacks don't work. That's why they're called hacks. Like the, the, Once in a while, a shortcut works, but you got to have underlying, you got to have the foundation, right? Everybody wants to, to pick out like the paint on the walls and the curtain in their house. They don't want to build the foundation. You got to start with the foundation and it's habits and it's, and it's these accelerator uh, habits. It's things that are sustainable. Like yes. these things, these things are all, all, every single one that you've mentioned is completely sustainable. It's not the quick fix or that shortcut that is useful now and then, but these things are all sustainable and worth putting time and energy into. They will lead to success. Yeah. Well, when things go t- get tough or you're going to have setbacks, like what are you going to fall back on? You're a bunch of hacks mm-hmm. or your habits. Let me tell you, my oh, habits yeah. have saved me time and again. And that's <laughs> resilient. Hundred percent. So I am making a crazy special offer, and I do this for successful dropouts all the time. I hope none of my members are even listening to this because I don't even offer them a rate this low. (laughs) I am serious. I don't. Um, But I know a lot of you are starting out, and I've been there, and I know how money can be. But if you look at your habits, your spending habits, you can save up. Let me tell you. That's Um, true. So our next 30-day accelerator starts on January 24th, runs till February 23rd. We actually uh, 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 had a couple of uh, college students in our fall accelerator. Um, Sam was in our spring accelerator and uh, recent grads as well. Uh, So let me tell you, when you're starting out in life, this is like one of those things I wish I had because worst case scenario, you're going to learn so much about yourself. 
Mm -hmm. um, really the goal is I want you to be on track to start building a business, but doing it on your terms in alignment with your needs, your values, and your abilities. And that's really different. We're not just telling you how to like start some business that I've done or somebody else has done and pulling a business model off the shelf. We're, we're inspiring you to design your own business model. We have all yeah. kinds of experts that come in, lawyer, accountant, business automation expert, all those people, if you hire them on your own, probably about 1500 bucks. So we are offering, um, and we do uh, live trainings every Saturday for two hours. We do weekly mastermind chats. And I think Sam, like, wouldn't you say like just the camaraderie, the community of like talking out all these different challenges. That was mm -hmm. probably one of the highlights of the accelerator. I think that's one of the most valuable things about the accelerator, because when you go, when you're starting out, you're thinking, right. Um, so I maybe found a few people that are trying to start out or, or maybe are further along than where I'm at now. When you jump into this accelerator, what I found was everyone's all in slightly different places, but we're all working towards similar goals. We're wanting to, to build up our businesses. We're wanting to start something new. We're wanting to um, learn about outreach and surprisingly enough, learn a lot about ourselves. Uh, that was a surprise for me. Pretty much the whole first few days was talking about just talk, just learning about myself. And I was thinking, wow, this isn't like really going into like a lot of jargon and all this business stuff. Like I expected it to is actually learning a lot about myself. And then over time I realized I was like, oh, wow, that is the foundation. Because as you say, Stephen, like, you know, when you're in business, you're your business's greatest asset, but also your business's greatest liability. And you have to have that foundation down. And I also love that you said we didn't use a lot of jargon. And that was always been one of my goals because I view that as how we've designed this as another way to accelerate your development because so many business programs, or maybe you're out there, you're like, I think I want to work for myself, but I get really intimidated with all that business talk. But we try mm. to reduce that as much as possible and just talk in plain English. You know what I mean? You know, this, we're not generating revenue for you. We're trying to help you make money. You know, that, so, yeah. that's, so that's what <clears> we try <throat> to do a lot of. Not that we're not going to be using business terms and, we, and there's different things that you definitely need to learn to start your business but we want to try to keep it simple, relatable, so you can connect to it and not overcomplicate things. Um, so we'll have a link for Sam. We are offering, uh, currently, we, we, it's a one-time payment of $1,000 or it's three monthly payments of $375, but we're offering three successful dropout members the very special rate of $175, three payments of $175, um, and uh, again, if you go into the show notes of uh, successful dropouts, we'll have that link there for that. Um, and we would love to be able to have, we've had successful dropouts in every accelerator now. i um, always loved and admired what Kylon had created and now what Sam is carrying on and uh, would love for somebody else to like carry the torch in, in our winter accelerator for the, for the successful dropouts. If you guys would really like to be supercharging your 2019 with a new opportunity i think this could be really the thing for you uh, we really love taking action in the successful dropout community and this could be the thing that actually gets your idea off the ground uh, when i went through the accelerator last year immediately after exiting the accelerator like i got four clients for my business i, know, I was so excited i tell people oh, that yeah. all the time it i love that it was fun it was good and fun Sam, even in this the fall accelerator five people got clients before the accelerator even ended and i will admit there was a couple of them that i didn't think wow. that they were going to be able to do it and they did you know i was so proud wow of them. yeah and and you guys, like, I really think that a lot of you out there, you're definitely of the caliber to just go and start doing something. And I think you just need to go do it. So if this does sound like the good option for you, then definitely check out the show notes. We've got all the links in there. Um, we'll also be posting a few things about it in the Facebook group as well. So we'll keep you all up to date and definitely check it out if you think it could be the thing for you. And I'll also have a link in there and how you can set up a call with me. Sometimes I know like something, a big thing like this that you want to talk it out. Totally get that. And I'd love to, to chat with you or at least help you overcome your number one obstacle to working for yourself. And as Sam was saying, one of my naive ideas, I truly believe more people, including you, have the capabilities of working for themselves. If you are taught to be an employee, you can learn to be self-employed because I actually think it's a more natural form of working for a human. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Stephen. Really appreciate it. Uh, well, successful dropouts. You are the average of the five people you hang around the most. And you've been hanging out with Sam and Stephen, learning everything the traditional system never taught you. For everything we talked about today, visit successfuldropout.com and type Stephen into the search bar and the show notes will pop right up and we'll have all those other links in to do with the accelerator as well. And that's Stephen with a P-H, S-T-E-P-H-E-N. It is Stephen with a P-H. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. Thank as you. always, successful dropouts, stay hungry. Stay foolish.